Today, my goal is to catch a big one. What's happened is, you know, two or three days ago, we got hit with a super, super harsh cold front. Water temperatures were mid 50s in December, which is unheard of, record highs for Oklahoma. And then all of a sudden we get highs in the 20s for a couple of days, lows in the teens. Super shock to the fish. I mean, it puts them in shock. And what that does for me, it gives me one bait in mine, and that's jerk bait. And particularly a rogue, like a big rogue, you know, jerking it slow around structure and things like that. So today, you know, coming to the lake, I think that's what I want to do. Throw a jerk bait. It's going to have to be slow. These fish are in shock, and I want to try to catch a big one. Some of the best days to catch giants are these days like this. Nobody at the boat ramp. Everybody's sitting on the couch. Uh, and these big ones just tend to bite on days like today. So we just rolled up to the first spot that I wanted to fish and I mean the very first thing I noticed is the water is way dirtier than I thought it was going to be. So what that's going to do more than likely is eliminate any open water jerkbait fish. And what I mean is out there over the top of brush or you know, catching those fish suspended on live scope, probably not going to happen. Whenever I see this dirtier water, it tells me, number one, I'm probably need to, going to need to fish shallower, even though the water's 45 degrees. You know, I need to be up around the bank and I need to get my bait as close to structure as I can. They might still be in some brush out a little bit, but that strike zone went from 10 foot down to three or four. So, you know, in picking colors with this being this dirty, I want something that they can see, something that's bright. Um, you know, this right here is, is probably one of my favorite colors. I was tempted to tie on old school fire tiger and I probably would if it was cloudy. You know, and if, I think it's supposed to actually cloud in this afternoon. We may switch to that one. But I think I'm gonna start with Oh, blue, blue back and orange belly. And I want one that's got some, that's got some scars on it. He's been in battle before. It's a shock. I'm gonna say this water temperature was in the high 50s just five or six days ago. So, you know, I wanna have a couple different rods rigged up. Um, we might try the clown, four and a half inch. We'll, we'll start with those two, but I do not want, that's actually the Elite Eight, which will work. Start with those two and uh, kind of go from there. So I've always used a snap, anything with treble hooks. And it's really, really important throwing a rogue or a jerk bait just because it gives it a little bit of head weight. When that thing suspends, I don't want it to suspend like that. I want it to suspend down. And what that does is it gives me a sharper angle there the next time I jerk. So I want to get maximum depth out of that. Uh, yeah, so you'll always, if, if, if I'm throwing a jerk bait, you're going to see that snap on the front. Right now, two things need to happen. First thing, it's way colder than I thought it was. I got to have a sock hat. And the second thing, most importantly, is the very first cast whenever i put a bait on jerk bait fishing is on live scope i want to throw it out there and i want to jerk it down and make sure that it's doing what i want it to do now if the water was super clear i would probably want that bank to sink a little bit you know i'm out there deeper fishing over brush fishing open water fish i'd want it to just sink maybe a foot every three or four seconds but in this dirtier water where I want to be fishing shallow, I actually want it to just hover um, where I can fish it a little bit shallower and maybe it's not going to dive as deep. So I'm going to make a few casts. And for you guys that don't know, jerk baits, they, they, they do different things based on different water temperatures. I may cast this thing and it may do exactly what I want it to do at 55 degrees, but at 45, typically it's going to sink. So you, I want to make that cast each day with a water temperature I have to make sure that bait's doing uh, what I want to do. And now if it's, if it's you know not sinking, I might put a little lead dot on there to make it sink a little bit. I might add a bigger hook. There's a lot of different ways you can make it sink and rise, but we just want to make sure it's doing what I want it to do. And it's just setting. 
not sinking. That's what I want it to do. Some of the biggest fish I've ever caught on a jerk bait, some of the best jerk bait day days I've had is in this color of water. You just have to fish it differently than you would in clear water. You're, they're not gonna be out roaming around. They can't see, it's like they're in a dark room. They can't see to feed. So they're gonna be around something to make them feel comfortable. If somebody, if you were in a dark room and, or if you were in a room in the middle and somebody turned the light out, the first thing that you're gonna do is back up and try to find a wall where you feel comfortable. That's the same way with the fish. That water gets dirty. They're gonna get around something where they can feel comfortable. He can't even fight. Not the size we want, but we got a bite. And it happened pretty quick, and he was on the bank. Yeah, when I jerk, of course he's not very big. He didn't even fight. So they will bite a jerk bait in six inches visibility with it blowing 20 right after a front. Stays the toughest bluebird right after a front, right after a shock in front. Water temperatures probably drop 13, 14 degrees in five, six days. And it's 45. But that's when, uh, that's when the old road kind of shines, you know, that action and being able to stop the bait right in front of them. We'll catch, we'll catch some, we'll run into some big ones. We just got to figure out where they're at. I started on this bank. It's pretty deep. It's pretty steep right up to about here. And then as you go up, it flattens out. So, and I do that a lot when I go to somewhere I haven't been in a while. Cause I, you know, I started on that deep stuff, more of the channel bank, just to kind of see where they're at, where I can get a bite. Are they going to be on the deeper stuff? Are they going to be where it flattens out? Oh, right there's one. He jumped. He threw, like, he ran with it. It's almost like flathead. Got them black spots on him. See, and what I was talking about right here where I'm at is where it kind of flattens. I really didn't think they would be biting, get a lot of bites, and then be small. I really thought it was gonna be a day where we wouldn't get a lot of bites, but when we did, it would be a great big one. This is not a really deep lake. You know, if you get out there in the middle of the lake, it's like 35. And I'm wanting to throw it up on the bank. So whenever I first, you know, it first lands and I start fishing it out, you're gonna see that I hold that rod up, popping it. And as it gets out there, I want to start lowering it. Just keeps me from digging the bottom with that jerk bait. Obviously, if we throw out on over deep water, you know, you want to hold that rod down to get the maximum depth. It's real important in this cold water, whenever you jerk this bait, that you only make contact with the bait at the end of your jerk. What I'm saying is you don't want to reel your line tight and then jerk it, because what happens is you're moving the bait three or four foot at a time. I want to hit it right at the end where that bait's just going. It stays right in front of them and then those little you know, hops or twitches is what makes them bite. Now, if it was 10 foot visibility, then yeah, we would want to move the bait a lot quicker. You could cover a lot more water. You know, some of the, some of these casts, 
if you're fishing the bait right and you fish it all the way back to the boat, it can take a minute, sometimes even two minutes. And that's not even letting the bait sit a long time. But whenever you're just moving it three or four inches at a time, when you twitch it, it takes a while to get it back. So the lake we're on, it doesn't have a lot of, you know, shoreline cover. It's got some brush piles and things out here. But you notice up the bank right there, there's a log or a tree that's broke off. It's laid out in the water. In the wintertime, a lot of these fish are going to concentrate. Uh, that's why, even though we're not fishing out here in this deeper water because of, the, of how dirty the water is, I'm still looking at live scope. I'm looking up here on the bank just to see how many fish are swimming around. If you get around an area that has a lot of fish, you're just going to see them swimming around, even out here, uh, you know, moving around. A lot of times there'll be stretches you'll fish down it and not get a bite. And, and after I fish it, I'm like, well, why did I even spend as much time? Because I didn't see anything swimming around on live scope, no bait, you know, no fish. But, you know, when they concentrate, especially when there's not a lot of cover, that tree right there is a perfect place. I mean, it lays horizontal. They can suspend out here, even in front of it, you know, on these colder days. And then as it warms up, they can move out there, move up on the bank. You know, the water's pretty dirty, so I wouldn't be surprised if they're not up there shallow anyway. But any kind of cover, especially when there's not that much, you wanna make a lot more cast around there. And I can see up in the creek where there's water coming in, it's a little bit clearer. We'll go up there, maybe the strike zone will increase some with, the, with them being able to see and we'll get a few more bites and hopefully get some big bites. Drilling the bait in. I think I've been working the bait too fast. It's not that big, but he's a good, good one. Come here, buddy. I thought he was real big. But he's a nice one for sure. It took me evaluate each bite, the third cast across that log to get him to bite. But the weird thing is, is I was reeling the bait in when he got it. So part of me wants to say, slow the bait down. It may just been, it took him reeling it in to get him to react. How fat he is. One thing about the winter time is they're usually going to be concentrated, so I'm going to pull back up there and make another cast or two before I take off. You know, another thing, too, that could have happened, it's pretty flat out here. In the first couple of casts, I was throwing at the log, and when he bit, I was reeling it in. I'm going to guess that that log runs way out here, and that root wad, you know, there's a root wad closer to the boat look at it on live scope now and kind of see but that's my guess and i you know i fished two or three things that look like this that were deeper and it just tells me with this dirtier water i'm gonna have to be shallow around the bank so so far we've had you know three four bites and the one thing i had two bites they were small but it was on kind of a chunky rock section. So even though the water's dirty, it's warmer on the lower end and uh, there's a lot more rocks. So we're gonna go down there. I don't like fishing. That's where the wind's hitting down there. I don't like fishing in a lot of wind when it's dirty, when it's this cold, because I, you know, I need to move that bait slow and I need them to find it. And with that wind and everything moving, it's harder for them to find it, but we can't catch anything up here. So we gotta try something else. And we're gonna go down there and try that. And if it doesn't work, then we may have to dig another bait out of the box. Cause I mean, we're here to catch them. I came to catch them on a jerk bait, but I wanna catch them. That's 
a good one. It's weird, the water is 45 degrees and when that one hit, it was opposite of the other three. They've hit while it's been setting still and that one like I was moving the bait. Another black, he's got them black spots. Four bites and the only thing that every bite has in common is it's on the bank. I'm getting nothing out. So I'm about, you know, it's about time to quit, to quit messing around and fishing that bait out deeper and just stay with, you know, that five, six foot or less. Come out of there. That was a spot at first. Just a chunky largemouth. Came here to catch big ones and man, that's a good one. So let's go through the setup I'm using today. Um, just like most days throwing a jerkbait, 12 pound Sunline uh, fluorocarbon sniper. I like fluorocarbon because I don't have to jerk the bait as hard. There's no stretch, just takes a little pop to get that bait to move. And also I feel like I can get a little bit deeper with it. This is just an old school five and a half inch Smithwick Rogue blue chrome orange belly. Orange belly because of kind of how dirty the water is. Um, Kara. Jerk bait rod, Falcon Care jerk bait rod, and a Lose Hyper Mag 6.8. Um, you know, just a basic setup. If I'm throwing a jerk bait in the wintertime, that's the setup that I use a lot. Some guys like a rod a little bit longer. I, I don't do it. You know, this rod length here, which is 6.8, I'm just more comfortable. I can cast it around and it doesn't wear me out jerking the bait. Really, I mean, just tough, it's, it's tough, tough conditions. Now I said earlier that when you get a bite in the winter time, make sure you feel around there and, cause a lot of times there'll be dead water. And then whenever you do get around some, there'll be more than one. That's a little bitty guy. I don't want to hurt him, so I'm gonna, get these pliers and take them off. If you notice what he went after, see that front hook, I always put a red hook on the front. He went after that red. Something about jerk bait fishing in the winter time. You know, I want them to target the front of the bait and not the back. A lot of times you'll notice uh, when we're filming, they're gonna eat the front hook. I have found the Mother load, I just don't know where the big ones, why we haven't got a hold of a six or seven pounder. You know, super tough day. Came out here trying to catch a big one and there's just some days it doesn't work out. So hopefully you learned something and thanks for riding along. <laughs>